Well, to say people have been looking forward to this game in these parts is the understatement of the college basketball season. Undefeated number one, Kentucky. Undefeated number four, Louisville, here at the KFC Yum Center in Louisville, Kentucky. Today's game is a part of ESPN's journey to the tourney presented by Sonic, a season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament. The Yum Center is full, 22,000 strong, mostly red, a little more blue than you might think for this huge matchup between the Wildcats and the Cardinals. Time now for the Sonic Showdown and Jay, not only two of the best teams in the country, two of the most talented players in the country. And two candidates, Dan, for National Player of the Year. Willie Cauley-Stein from Kentucky has been the nation's best defender to this point, and he's gonna have a difficult assignment with Montrez Harrell, who is averaging over 40 minutes, 22 points per game. A guy who can really score, but is a relentless offensive rebounder. And that could be the difference in this game, how each team handles the glass. Now, the good news for the Louisville Cardinals is that Montrez Harrell, although he was suspended for one game, it was the last game the Cardinals played because the incident happened a couple of games ago against Western Kentucky, so he is back for today's Titanic matchup. For more on Montrez Harrell, here's Shannon Spade. Well, Dan, Harrell told me, yes, I am edgy, and yes, I play with a chip on my shoulder, and he accepts that. He also accepts his role as the leader of what he calls his team. He told me when he was suspended for that game, he knows that he let his team down, but they certainly learned some things. Number one, they learned that this Louisville squad can play through adversity, and they can win without Harrell on the court. Harrell himself learned that he has to learn to control his emotions because he told me, I know teams will try to push me to that point after they've already seen me go there. This, of course, will be an emotional and a physical game on both sides of the ball, man. All right, Shannon, thank you. Yes, it will be emotional. It will be physical. They met twice last year, and Kentucky won both of those games. Let's look at the starting lineup right now for the visiting Kentucky Wildcats. With the Harrison Twins starting in the backcourt, Trey Lyles has moved into the starting spot occupied by Alex Poitras. After the season of the torn ACL, Carl Anthony Towns and Willie Cauley-Stein. But as you know, if you're a college basketball fan, you'll see a lot of bodies for John Calipari here today. For Louisville, they've got four guys averaging 12 or more, nobody else averaging even five. So they're not quite as spread out uh, offensively, at least, as Kentucky is Chris Jones, Terry Rozier, who's on a tear. Wayne Blackshear uh, coming off a 31-point game in his last game. That's a career high. Harrell and then Shananu Anawaku, who will have to deal with all that size that Kentucky has. The all-time series between these two favors Kentucky, 32-15. to They did not meet in the regular season. From 1922 through 1983, they played in every year since. And, of course, Jay, they've been in the NCAA tournament two of the last three years. Well, this is a rivalry as good as any in college sports. And for Louisville and Kentucky to meet at any time, it's always two of the best teams in the country. And especially over the last five or six years, you can't match the accomplishments of these two teams, especially against each other. 2012, Kentucky wins the national championship. 13, Louisville does. Last year, Kentucky makes it to the championship game. And both of these teams with championship aspirations here this year. One thing you know you'll see if you've watched Louisville is intense defense, a lot of pressure up and down the court. See how the Harrisons and Tyler Eulis handle it. Nice look inside for Towns. Follows up his own miss, and Kentucky's on the board. Well, Louisville is a zone team. They play a lot of zone. And oftentimes, offensive rebounding is going to be an issue. And to give up an offensive rebound that quickly to Kentucky is not a good sign for Louisville. They've got to get on the glass. And it's something Rick Pitino's talked about, feeling that Kentucky beat Louisville last year in both games, really, especially in the NCAA tournament game because of their advantage on the glass. Montrez Harrell ties the game. And immediately Louisville puts on full court pressure. They want to make this Kentucky team play 94 feet, seeing if they can turn them over. Andrew Harrison, number five, the primary point guard. His brother Aaron, number two, the shooting guard. Andrew the drive, wide open look for Lyles. 
So we've seen Towns and Lyles, two freshmen scoring. Now is Steele. Collie Stein off to Harrison, who misses it. Aaron Harrison, who misses the three. And the back come the Cardinals. Remember, this is Kentucky's first true road game of the season. But we've seen that Towns and Lyles, they've already gotten on the score sheet. Well, Kentucky putting on some full court pressure of its own on Louisville. And Willie Cauley Stein, you can see how good of a defender. He can switch out on Terry Rozier. And most big guys are not even going to think about that. And he can guard all five positions on the floor. Harrell had a mismatch, but loses it out of bounds. And Aaron Harrison defending him in the post could not take advantage. You know, Kentucky likes to switch. They are not worried because of their size and length. They're going to have some mismatches. And they're going to challenge you to go after those mismatches and see if you can take advantage of it. Aaron Harrison just did a terrific job of staying solid in between Harrell and the basket. Holly Stein, what a year he's having. It will stay with Kentucky. You have made the case, and I agree with you 100%, even though he only plays 24 minutes per game, the guy's got to be in the National Player of the Year conversation. There's no question about it. He has played on both ends as well as any big guy in the country. And there's Collie Stein for the follow on the miss by Towns. Second offensive rebound and second conversion already for Kentucky. You know, John Calipari talked to his team about being strong and physical and accepting the physical challenge that Louisville was going to present. And Carl Anthony Towns just discarded a Louisville defender, was wide open underneath the basket. You can see he just gets rid of Anawaku, who goes down in a heap. And that leaves two on one on the offensive glass. And Kentucky is going to win that almost every time. And it also sends Anawaku to the bench. Rick Pitino with the first sub of the game as Mango Mathiang checks in. The floater for Terry Rozier, who comes into today averaging better than 23 points per game in his last four. And he shot over 50% during yeah. that period. He's just an outstanding athlete that can really score, and he's a warrior. So much size in the backcourt, all over the court, really, for Kentucky. The Harrisons are both 6'6". Louisville goes 6'1", 5'10", in the backcourt. Well, and Louisville can block shots, too, now. They're right there with Kentucky with their shot-blocking ability. They just don't have quite as many that they can bring off the bench. Mm -hmm. Can Louisville make outside shots? It has been a problem most of the season for them. Well, neither of these teams is a proficient shooting team. They're both in the bottom half of Division I in three-point field goal percentage. Rick Pitino, of course, spent eight years as the head coach at Kentucky, including a national championship there in 1996, now in his 14th season as head coach of Louisville. And what a run it's been for the Hall of Famer. It's really been amazing what he's accomplished here at Louisville. And then what they've accomplished just in the last three years. Jones with a pull-up. A little bit too strong. Loose ball. Louisville ball. Harrell from the free throw line to tie the game. Boy, loose balls. Trying to corral rebounds. That's going to be the difference in this game. So far, Kentucky handling the pressure pretty well. Tied at six, about three and a half in. Here with just about everybody standing at the Yum Center in Louisville. Kentucky's going to have to get the ball into the middle of this zone. They can't be content to just shoot out on the perimeter. And away from the ball, an offensive foul going against Carl Anthony Towns. We saw Towns earlier with the discard, just a little bit too much on this. That was really nothing. I can't believe they called a foul on that. I thought he, he had to have done something and did nothing. And now the first wave of substitutions for Kentucky. Lyles will stay, and four fresh bodies join him. Euless, Booker, Lee, and Johnson. Harold lost it. Third turnover committed by the Cardinals. Lyles, his second jumper of the game already. Kentucky's press did what it wanted to do there, and that's make a big guy handle the ball. And it resulted in a turnover and an easy basket, an easy look on the other end that would be very difficult to get against Louisville's half-court defense. So if you can get Harold to handle the ball here, that's a win for this Kentucky press. Cardinals get it over. Jones now playing against a guy closer to his own size. He's actually bigger than Euless. Euless listed at 5'9". Gives Kentucky a very different look in the backcourt from the Harrisons. Louisville setting a lot of back screens in this offense. Blackshear spins into trouble and another turnover. 
Well, it's Kentucky that's been stronger defensively, getting steals, knocking the ball away. Well, if you show that ball, it's gone. Booker, eight for nine from three-point range in his last two games. He'll set that high ball screen. Good pass. Lyles into Johnson. And it's good. A four-point lead now for the Wildcats. Well, Trey Lyles is such a good basketball player. He's got a high basketball IQ. That was a great pass that he made to Dakari Johnson. He got a hand on that pass from Harrell, but it bounces off to Blackshear. But you figure Blackshear's a huge key today for Louisville. Well, they need some offense. Louisville scorers have got to score. They've got yeah. three guys on the floor now that have scored 30 or more in a game. They've got to put some points on. Matthew Angno and Johnson down with a rebound for the Cats. Well, Harrell looked like he could get an offensive rebound there, but the size of Kentucky just took it right away. It'll be Louisville ball when we come back. Our first time out of the day. A 10-6 lead for Kentucky in the early going here against their arch rivals, the Louisville Cardinals at the Yum Center. Lyles, the nice feed into Johnson. Kentucky leads. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. And yes, this is Louisville's first year in the ACC, and the conference play will begin soon enough for the Cardinals, but today they've got their sights set on the number one team of the nation, the Kentucky Wildcats. It's a 10-6 lead early for Kentucky. Jay, how come? Well, it's been really turnovers for Louisville and offensive rebound opportunities for Kentucky. Kentucky's gotten to the glass. They've gotten some baskets in the lane, but they've also turned Louisville over four times in a little over five minutes in this ballgame. And that, that's a big deal if Kentucky, can, if it's their defense can get some easy baskets against this Louisville, uh, Louisville team. Into the game for the Cardinals out of the timeout. 6-2 freshman Quinton Snyder, number two, another ball handler in the backcourt. He's out there along with Rozier as Jones has gone to the bench for Rick Pitino. And the double drag up top. You just want to stay in front. And Harrell is really making it difficult on Marcus Lee. Mathiang working hard to get closer to the rim but can't finish. The size of Dakari Johnson causing a problem. Aaron Harrison partially rejected by Montrez Harrell. And Rozier surrounded. It'll be a held ball. The arrow will keep it with Louisville. I'll tell you, Dan, you had better come strong in this game. There are shot blockers. You've got really strong guards that don't just put their body between you and the basket. They're going after the ball to steal it. They're not reaching for it. They go and grab it. And this is a nice Euro step move by Aaron Harrison, but Montrez Harrell comes, gets a hand on it, and blocks it. These are two of the best shot blocking teams in the country. Kentucky is number one, almost nine blocks per game. Jones back into the game for Rozier. Snyder fouled by Booker. Now Dan, one of the, the great writers in, uh, in basketball, Rick Fosich, wrote an article recently about this Kentucky-Louisville rivalry being better than the Duke-Carolina rivalry. And when I first saw that, I thought, oh, come on. And then you read it, and you started talking about, wait a minute, th these, two, these two teams share a that they've had 11 national championships between them, what they've accomplished in the game, and especially over the last several years. It's a, it makes a darn good case for it. Foul on Andrew Harrison. Two of the last three national championships belong to one of these two programs. You got a little blue sitting alongside red here at the Yum Center. And again, it's, it's really tough to, to make a guess, but I would say maybe a couple of thousand Kentucky fans are here in Louisville and even more outside. There's yeah. a lot of blue outside that may not even get into the game. Snyder on Iwaku, wide open at the free throw line. It's about the third or fourth open jumper that Louisville has missed. Booker's open in the corner. Too strong. Lee kicks it back out. Another Ooh. offensive rebound for Kentucky. Andrew Harrison didn't like Jones getting in his grill, swung an elbow, missed Jones. Jones had something to say to Harrison. Well, he was five feet away. And now the foul's going to go against Snyder, and it's already getting heated. Well, you have to expect that it's going to, with these two teams as good as they are. All right, right Boog, thank you. Happy holidays, everybody, and welcome to the KFC Yum Center here in Louisville.
seven minutes in, and Kentucky with an early 10 to six lead on the Cardinals, undefeated number one against undefeated number four, and they don't like each other one bit. Last couple of possessions, the intensity and emotion and physicality of the game has been ratcheted up a notch or two. And he better be strong with the ball. Kentucky getting some steals and offensive rebounds to start out. Andrew Harris in the miss. There's another offensive rebound. It bounces to Booker. This has been a long possession because of those offensive boards. Marcus Lee had himself a dunk that was kind of rushing to the rim before it corralled the pass, and it's Louisville ball. Now you could see him taking his eyes off it because he wanted to get to the rim so quickly. You're only going to have a short period of time to make a move, but you got to catch it first. Louisville's had trouble on the glass and with turnovers in this game, yet they only find themselves down four. Shaquan Aaron, a freshman, into the game, hands it off to Blackshear, who misses the three. And the foul is going to go against Anuwaku of Louisville. But what a difficult shot for Wayne Blackshear. He's just coming off a 31-point game against Cal State Northridge. But those are contested shots that are awfully difficult against any defense, let alone Kentucky. And Trey Lyles knocked down a couple of jumpers in the opening minutes of the game. Montrez Harrell has a couple of field goals for Louisville. And again, uh, turnovers, points off turnovers, a problem for the Cardinals so far. The glass has been a problem. And John Calipari makes another wave of substitutions, and he's got the starters back in there. And they get a carry, got a double dribble. Looked like it could have been a little bit of each as Andrew Harrison turns it over. Just a great job by Chris Jones to put pressure on Andrew Harrison. He's bigger, just needs to use his body to stay in between Jones and the ball. But you've got some big-time defenders in the backcourt. Just reach for it, and that high dribble, Harrison just brought it to rest. Willie Cauley-Stein right now covering Montrez Harrell. He figures to draw the bulk of that assignment here today. Yeah, he'll have him most of the time that he's in there, but there are going to be a lot of switches. He's going to be on different guys. Towns over Harrell for the rebound. A little bit cold from outside, too. Again, for those of you who are just joining us, if you were watching the end of the Georgetown-Indiana game, the Cardinals have had some pretty good looks. Some tough shots, yes, too, but also some open looks that they haven't been able to knock down. Well, Kentucky has been making the non-shooters shoot. Blackshear is a guy you really have to watch when he's in a game carrier's ear another. But this is not a proficient three-point shooting team. Neither of them are, really. Andrew Harrison tried to lob it up, and Blackshear kind of kept Pauly Stein away from the basket. Aaron launches a wing three and gets the roll. Boy, he's not shot. This is just his second game. He was... Held out for the first nine games because of an eligibility issue. And he's got this place rocking right now. Pauly Stein, great patience, rejected by Harrell. Big-time players make big-time plays. And Montrez Harrell is a big-time player. That player of the year candidate going against player of the year candidate. The nice up and under move and just erased by Montrez Harrell. Back to Louisville. Happy holidays, everybody. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Shannon Spake with you here at the KFC Yum Center. How much fun has this been? How much fun is this going to be? Kentucky and Louisville, they don't like each other. They're two great teams, number one, number four, undefeated. As good a, a, a rivalry, as good an atmosphere as there is in college basketball. One of the great rivalries, not only in college basketball, but in sports. And I think, you know, we, we heard about Rick Bozich's column where he said it's actually better than the Duke-North Carolina rivalry in basketball. And you got to give it to them that they may have the, they may have the case there. Yeah, they've got proximity. They've got famous fans and famous alumni. They've got NCAA championships. They've got one coach who used to coach at the other place. This rivalry really has everything. Just the second time, by the way, that these two teams have met when both of them were ranked in the top five. Again, they didn't play in the regular season for about 60 years until the rivalry resumed in 1983. Now they play every year. Plus, they've met in the NCAA tournament twice in the last three years. Once in the Final Four, once in the Sweet 16, both won by Kentucky. Aaron Harrison left it short. Boy, the ball pressure that Louisville is putting on to Kentucky. Now, this doesn't look like a 2-3 zone. That's what it is. 
they have man responsibilities in that zone. It's the most aggressive zone that I've ever seen, frankly. But those guards, Chris Jones and Terry Rozier, put an amazing amount of pressure on the basketball. Not good to bounce. It stays with Kentucky. There are just three seconds on the shot clock. Now, if you think you're going to run your little set plays in this kind of game, you're going to have to make a play, not run a play. Towns for three. And Louisville can take the lead. Jones step back three. And it is Louisville Bones as Roger Ayers working the game along with Carl Hess and Michael Roberts. John Calipari doesn't like that call. But Kentucky has such tremendous size around the glass and Harrell just is relentless in going after offensive rebounds. The average is 10 rebounds a game. Three of them are on the offensive end. Well, of course, suspended for the last game against Cal State Northridge after it was deemed he threw a punch in the Western Kentucky game. A legitimate national player of the year candidate. It was a whole thing, it like. Aaron Harris yeah. got him. And Jones and Rozier, especially when both Harrison twins are in there, they're giving up a lot of size, but you've seen these guys over the last couple of years. They're not going to give an inch in terms of uh, backing down from it. Yeah, they're giving up size, but they're not giving up strength. Those are two really strong guards, and they're excellent rebounding guards. And I think the fact that they are a little bit smaller, they've got more leverage. They get really low, and it is difficult to move them in any way, shape, or form. Jones with Eulis on him right now. Jones has not been shy to start the game. Has not been shooting the ball well this year. He's just 32% from the field on the season. And Tyler Eulis, one of the best on-ball defenders you're going to find in the country. But I put Chris Jones right with him. This is an excellent defensive backcourt for Rover. Kentucky has gone cold after a hot start. Their defense led to some offense early. Here's Eulis using the screen. Puts up the floater. Three-point lead Wildcats. Well, that's where they have to get. If you can get into the middle there... Aaron Harrison had driven a little bit earlier in the game and tried to lob one up. You've got to drive to score. And then if you get shut off, you can pass. But Polly Stein, how many seven-footers are helping out to try to work the front of the press against none. the point guard bringing up the ball? Answer is yeah, none. Yeah. Or one, Willie well, Polly Stein. Really stolen. Numbers now for Louisville. Booker's caught behind the play. Rozier with a drive, and he draws the foul. Well, that was a great shot fake. And Willie Cauley-Stein got the block. I think they got Trey Lyles with the foul on the reach-in. That's a great shot fake. But you cannot foul a driver. You've got to allow your shot blockers to do their job at the rim. When you've got that kind of coverage around the rim, fouling with a little, little weak reach-in is absolutely the wrong move. Rozier, one of the most improved players in the country. He's a freshman last year, averaged seven points per game. Obviously, a lot more opportunity this year. Russ Smith has moved on, but he's more than double the scoring. He's almost 17 points per game. And you mentioned over the last four games, averaging almost 24, shooting over 50% from the, the field during that stretch. And how good was he in the second half against Western Kentucky? At 26 points, 17 in a row. And that was when Harold had exactly. been kicked out of the game. And they needed all those points to beat Western Kentucky. That was a nine-point game, the closest game Louisville's had. Kentucky's won every game by at least 10. And they're averaging a 29-point margin of victory this year, number one in the nation. Well, this is by far the toughest test they've had, and I think the toughest they're going to have in the regular season. Blacks here. Miss the layup. That is an opportunity, Dan, you cannot let get away. That's where Wayne Blackshear needed to go off of two feet and just bully Devin Booker. You can't go in pretty in this game. What a wasted opportunity for Louisville. Holly Stein with a turnaround. Harrell keeps Towns away from the rebound. Well, Towns went over his back, but just didn't call it. Nobody's going to get that ball away from Montrez Harrell once he got both mitts on it. Harrell for three. We saw him make three against Minnesota in the season opener down in Puerto Rico. He's just one for 16 since. Well, Carl Anthony Towns just walked, but he has done a good job of being physical in this game, especially on the glass. 
Former Kentucky player Tony Delk told me, while these two coaches will not admit it, the rivalry is bigger for them, and it really heated up the 95-96 season. That is when the Patino-led Kentucky Wildcats beat Calipari's UMass team in the regular season. They would then meet again in the final four before that game. Point guard Ed Edgar Padilla went on, went on national television and said, hey, we beat them once, we can beat them again. Delk said that was absolutely bulletin board material and helped fuel these two coaches in this rivalry. All right, Shannon, thank you. With John Calipari is 14 and 12 all time against Rick Pitino. He's 6 and 1 against Pitino as the Kentucky coach. This is the sixth season for John Calipari as head coach of the Wildcats. Two great coaches, two great programs, 75 miles separating the two cities and fan bases and players who legitimately dislike one another. It really has all the makings of one of the best rivalries around. Well, and it's had a history to it with all the great coaches that you've had at Kentucky and the history that you've had at Louisville with Denny Crum and all the great teams winning the national championship in 80 and 86 and you know, Rick Pitino having one of the great runs I think in college basketball history uh, at Kentucky at least he started it there with their 96 championship going to the championship game in 97 losing in overtime to Arizona in the 98 Cubby Smith winning the championship that's one of the great three-year periods in college basketball history Low scoring game. Kentucky's made just one of its last eight. They are shooting only 33%, and Louisville's down in the 20s right now. Eighth Kentucky turnover. Jones to Rozier. Steps in, knocks it down. Cardinals have the lead. This Louisville pressure has gotten to Kentucky a bit with the turnovers. And finally, Louisville getting a basket off one of those turnovers. Well, Kentucky can't be content to throw it around the perimeter. They've got to get it inside. Jakari Johnson loses it out of bounds. Louisville ball, turnover number nine. And that's going to send Johnson to the bench. Towns will return for Kentucky. Six and a half minutes to go in the first half to have coughed it up nine times. And Louisville's got to take advantage of that. They've been getting open shots. You have to knock those down. And shot fakes have been really effective. Every time that Louisville has shot faked, they've gotten somebody from Kentucky off the floor. They're again being guarded by Polly Stein. Rozier. And down to the rebound for Kentucky, Aaron Harrison. That's what Kentucky needs are for the guards to get down and rebound. You can't expect the big guys against a very good rebounding team in Louisville to grab every defensive board. The guards have to get in there. Towns trying to get positioned down low on Mathieu. Now Andrew Harrison calling for the screen. Up to his brother. Aaron will miss the three. Look at this. Long pass ahead for Aaron. Jones for three. And they continue to miss open looks. And I'm right with you. This is a game where Louisville probably should be up six or eight right no now. No question. And instead, they're down. Aaron Harrison knocks down a wide open three. Timeout, Rick Pitino. 5.18 to go here in the first half at the KFC Yum Center. And Kentucky on the road, leading by two. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the U.S. Army. Some are driven by expectations. Some defy them. Find your career at GoArmy.com slash defy. Welcome back to Louisville with Shannon Spake, Jay Billis. I'm Dan Schulman, the Cardinals and the Wildcats, number one Kentucky, number four Louisville. Neither team shooting well, and Kentucky having some real turnover trouble. It was Louisville's problem in the early going. Louisville's taken a very good care of the ball since, but they appear to be shying away from going inside and challenging Kentucky in all their length. Well, they're settling for jump shots. And you had Blackshear in the open court that missed a layup because he didn't go strong with it. And Traquan Aaron gives up a layup opportunity in order to kick it out to get a three. Now, some of these shots have been open. You just have to make them. That's a contested shot and a difficult one. Tyler Stein down to the rebound off the miss by Aaron. And now, Tyler Eulis is bleeding all down the right side of his face. Looks like from the right eyebrow. Play continues as now the ball is deflected out of bounds, but they're going to have to they're going to have to patch up Eulis here. 
You don't think you can get through a Kentucky-Louisville game without there being real blood. And Roger Ayers will walk him over to the bench as Andrew Harrison will check back in. And we'll see it when he turns. There it is. There he's got blood pouring down his face. It's on his shoulder, on his uniform, and they're going to have to get him cleaned up. John Calipari asking that a there it is. Uh, officials yep. look at the monitor. And you know, th those are the kind of things, Dan. Like, did he get hit in the face with an elbow? Yes, he did. But that's incidental contact, in my judgment. You've got to allow a guy, if you're going to get right up into him, and, and look, the officials are probably going to have no choice here but to call a, a flagrant foul here. I don't think they should. I think it's a rules change that we need to go through. But that, that is not something that should result in two shots in the ball in this kind of game. He's just ripping through to go to the other side. That, that's incidental contact. If it happened on a rebound, we wouldn't be talking about this. They do have the authority to just say this is a basketball play. No foul they whatsoever. Do, but they hardly ever do on this type of play when you're ripping through and the guy's in legal guarding position, which he is, two feet on the floor facing the ball handler. They're, they're going to, my sense is they're going to call a flagrant one here. Which would be two shots in the ball. And, and that's not what the rule intended. Carl has Roger Ayers continuing to look at the monitor, checking out replays and whatever their decision is. Looks like they're saying nothing. Yeah, because they're going over to talk to John Calipari, and he's got a very unhappy look on his face. Eulis being walked back to the locker room may need some stitches. Well, good for them. But if they said nothing out of that, that's the exact right result. And there's Jones. You can see him saying he was just ripping through with the ball, that he didn't intend to do anything. But that is not the normal call we have seen yeah. this year in that type of play. But I happen to believe it's the right call. So Eulis to the locker room, the Harrisons in the backcourt. Up front along with Towns, Lyles, and Collie Stein. A physical, low-scoring, low-shooting percentage game with Kentucky leading Louisville by two. Zone, although as you say, Jay, sometimes it's tough to tell. Well, it's so aggressive because they go into man to man out of it. They have man responsibilities. What they're going to do is heat up the ball at every opportunity with pressure. On them. So they're, they're basically playing man to man on the ball every time. That's a shot clock violation. The shot clock showing zero right now. The, the officials pointed that it was out of bounds off Louisville, but it's going to be their ball because there's nothing showing on the shot clock. So yet another oh, Kentucky oh, turnover. They're tenth. Louisville is going to have to take advantage of these turnovers. They have gotten opportunities and they've got the score. They're just 5 for 21, 24% shooting so far in this game. Blackshear. And it's tied at 15. Well, Louisville's done a great job of taking advantage of the shot fake. They are getting Kentucky off the floor with every fake. Lyles with his third jumper, and all three of them have come from virtually the same spot on the floor. We have the under four media timeout here in Louisville. Kentucky back on top. Think it's intense? Think it means a lot? Two-point lead, Wildcats. All right, Carl, thank you. Looking forward to that. 3.46 left in the first half here in Louisville with Kentucky leading Louisville by two points. And there's Louisville native Jennifer Lawrence, who's a big fan of the Cardinals here today. Thought it was you know, nice of you to offer a seat in case you didn't have one. I didn't think it was so nice of you to offer her my seat in case you didn't have one. But we'll work that out at halftime. Right. The, the rivalry, the, the Kentucky Louisville rivalry, definitely has the movie star. They yes. had the movie star fight with Ashley Judd and, yes. and Jennifer Lawrence. That's pretty impressive. Tyler Eulis is back, having been had that cut 10 to 2 near his right eye on the bench right now. Devin Booker has checked back into the game for the Wildcats. It is a two point lead for Kentucky. A team at winning by an average of 29 points per game. Louisville's average margin of victory is 23 points per game this year. You play five on five against either one of these two teams, you're going to have a hard time getting shots. And there was another challenge shot. 
taken by Louisville. Next Saturday, ESPN2 Saturday Showcase features a Big Ten ACC doubleheader at 3.30. It'll be Big Ten Illinois and Ohio State. And then you will see one of the best teams in the country, Virginia, taking on Miami on the home court. Hey. The Chiefs. Can they get it in? Harold quiet since the early going. Draws the foul. Looks like they got him down low, and that's another instance of you know, Carl Anthony Towns, whoever it is on the ball, have a little bit more discipline and allow your teammates to block that shot up high. Hey, Louisville almost didn't get that ball in. Yep. Second foul on Towns. Amazingly enough, in a game this physical, these will be only the third and fourth free throws taken in the game, all of them by Louisville. Kentucky has not been to the line today. It comes to Kari Johnson back in for Towns. There has been no real platooning in this game, at least since the first six or seven minutes. Of course, since the injury to Alex Poitras, the rotation has been tightened to nine for the most part. Willis and Hawkins will play every now and again, but the rotations have changed for John Calipari in the last three, four games. Now, this is a game, Dan, where you can, if you can play ahead of the opponent's defense, you're going to be in a much better position. And Trey Lyles has gotten a couple shots, whether it's after a made field goal or a miss, where Kentucky's pushed the ball up and he's gotten an open mid-range jumper. Now, going five on five all game long is going to be difficult to find a good shot. Andrew Harrison baseline drive. Out of bounds to Kentucky with six on the shot clock, and Eulis is checking back into the game. Well, Tyler Eulis is an excellent passer. He's always under control, and he does a really good job of running a team. Here comes Willie Pauley Stein in for Marcus Lee. Six on the shot clock, Kentucky ball. Anytime you play against Kentucky out of bounds under, you got to watch lives. Eulis forces it up. Weak side rebound, Lyles bounces free to Johnson, held ball, and the arrow will keep it with Kentucky. Or the long arms of Louisville, not just Montrez Harrell, but Mango Mathiang. And then you go down to the other end and you have to shoot through the trees of Kentucky. Anything around the basket is going to be contested. Kentucky in the front court right now is 6'10", 7 foot, 7 foot. Bigger than just about any NBA team that you will see. Any NBA team except one. Only the Blazers are bigger. Louisville ball. A chance to reclaim the lead. Harrow trying to gather. Can't finish amidst all the traffic. And it's Kentucky ball with Louisville fans screaming for a foul. is fouled before the shot and that's another opportunity for Louisville in the open court where they come away with absolutely nothing a mishandling of the ball by Chris Jones and then Montrez Harrell underneath now is there some bump in there maybe but it has been shown on both ends that you are gonna have to be strong and make a play through contact you're not gonna be given any fouls in this one if you haven't been with us the entire time, you could make a case, as we discussed earlier in the half, that Louisville could be up 6, 8, 10 points in this game had they taken advantage of their opportunities, both open shots and in the open court in transition. Even though you've got shot blockers in blue, I think Louisville's got to continue to attack the basket, put pressure on the rim, and then kick it out from there if they can get shot blockers to commit. The other part, Dan, is the offensive glass. If you drive in... As long as it's not blocked out the half court, you've got a really good opportunity to get offensive rebound. Less than two minutes to go here in the first half. Lyles. Followed by Lee. And that's what he does, his offensive rebound. Remember his game that he had against Michigan in the NCAA tournament. The best game of his career. That's the first dunk we have seen in this game on either side. Third, third dunk, we are told, for uh, Kentucky. They've had as many as 17 in a game this year. Arrow driving on Lee. Mathian rejected by Lee. And 
Kentucky starting to assert themselves a little bit more here in the last minute or two, trying to widen out this lead. Holly Stein too strong. Aaron down with the rebound into the final minute of play. These block shots for Kentucky are why you do not want to give up a foul. Let your shot blockers do their job up by the rim. They are erasing a lot of opportunities. And Jones called, or draws the foul rather, Willie Cauley Stein doesn't like the call. He got called for a push. Cauley Stein now a junior and just has gotten better and better. We talked about it off the top of the show when we were still on ESPN News as the Georgetown Indiana game was in overtime. He has turned into one of the very best players in the country. He's just so active. He's a freak athlete. And his ability to defend all five positions on the floor is just uncanny. Plays 24 minutes per game. Plays more than anybody else on the Kentucky roster. And he's averaging 10 and a half points, almost seven rebounds, and nearly two blocks and nearly two steals per game. And the two best defensive teams in the country, and the score reflects that, yes. doesn't it? Yep. Kentucky yeah. giving up. Fewer than 48 points per game, only Virginia allows fewer points per game than Kentucky, and Louisville's not far behind at 54. And each team taking away the strength of the other. Wiles cross court, Booker for three. And a confident freshman from Grand Rapids, Michigan, extends the lead to four. Well, he was brilliant against UCLA, averaging 17 a game over his last two. Eight of nine from three coming into this one over his last two games. Cardinals could hold for the final look of the half. Jones trying to get a foul call on Euless. He should have gotten one. There were two hands on the ball handle. Yeah, that's supposed to be an automatic foul. Now the screen. And the pull-up, and Jones barely grazes the rim. He has not shot the ball well in this game, has not made a field goal in this game, just 0 for 6. Yeah, he's been great defensively, but he heard some footsteps on that one. Didn't want to take it all the way to the rim, and at the last second just pulled up in an awkward fashion. Louisville shooting 22% in the first half. They've got one second. And we will go to halftime with Kentucky leading Louisville by four. The lowest scoring half for both teams so far this season. A couple of undefeated teams, number one against number four. And to no one's surprise, defense ruling the day. A 22-18 lead for Kentucky over Louisville. At halftime, Shannon Spake is with Coach Calipari. Well, you guys knew that this was going to be a battle. What have you seen in the first half with your guys? We're not able to play through the bumps. So we're missing all kind of shots, and the guy will come over, he hit me. Don't play then, I'm sitting them out. I know how they play. You gotta play tough. There's no one gonna surrender to our team, ever. And they're gonna come out and fight and grab, they got to. You know, they've had their offensive that struggles. <laughs> that was definitely emotional. You got to go back there and do that for them. Uh, it, you know, they've had their struggles offensively, but the turnovers is the one thing that stands out on your stat sheet. How do you prioritize to get those down? You know what? Again, you got to be strong with the ball and make easy plays. We're throwing lookaways. And again, why? Because there's body to body, and we're not saying that's not going to phase me. Well, you've got the emotions, Cal, guys. All right, Shannon, never a dull moment with John Calipari. 22-18, Kentucky leading Louisville here at the half. Let's send it back to the studio for the Land Rover Halftime Report with Carol Lawson. Here's Carl Ravich. Today's game is part of ESPN's Journey to the Tourney, presented by Sonic, a season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament. Welcome back to Louisville. Number one, Kentucky. Number four, Louisville in a very low scoring first half Kentucky in a close one leading 22 to 18 over the Cardinals welcome back happy holidays Dan Schulman to Jay Billis we talked about it a couple of times during the first half Louisville had their chances really they should have the lead had they taken advantage of those opportunities well Louisville has forced 10 Kentucky turnovers where they had the opportunity to play ahead of that Kentucky defense but they got nothing out of it Wayne Blackshear with a one-on-one -on -one opportunity in transition instead of bowling Devin Booker to the basket gang and end one he winds up missing an open court layup, didn't even draw iron with the rim, and then the ball passed ahead to Shaquan Aaron. He's got an opportunity to go up and get fouled. He passes it out. Instead of driving it, they take a contested three. A weak shot by Chris Jones going to the basket, and then Montrezl Harrell just surrounded by the trees 
of Kentucky, the outstanding shot blockers, but Louisville's had some opportunities they haven't taken advantage of. It. Shannon Spake had a chance to speak with Rick Pitino during halftime. Well, Dan, he said, we're playing great defense, but they're playing great defense. He said, we have got to limit them on the offensive glass. And guys, I asked him about those offensive struggles. He looked at me, kind of shrugged. He said, well, we're not a great shooting team, but the main reason we're struggling is because we lost Luke Hancock and Russ Smith. He's got a sense of humor today. <laughs> I'm expecting, you know, Russ Smith isn't walking through that door. Luke Hancock isn't walking through that door as the Cardinals are down four. John Calipari, meanwhile, is kind of back into the platoon system here at the start of the half. This is the, I think it's the white platoon. He's kind of gotten away from it, but this is the white platoon that does not start the game. They're down to nine healthy players, really, at the core of their rotation. Uh, Trey Lyles, who uh, has ha had a very good first half, knocked down three jumpers, is with this group with Lee Johnson. Euless and Booker. And there's been no second shots for Louisville in this game. A relative weakness for Kentucky has been cleaning up the defensive backboard. But in this ball game, they have not allowed second shots to Louisville. Overall, it's plus 10 on the glass for Kentucky. 25-15. Now you miss as many shots as Louisville missed. The defense should get the vast majority of those. Doesn't mean they are going to get it. Kentucky actually has more offensive rebounds and Louisville has defensive rebounds today. Tough one for Booker. Rebound to Rozier. Can the Louisville guards get going? Rozier and Jones between them are just two for 13. Rozier's two for seven. And Jones hasn't made a field goal yet. He's 0 for six. Well, one of the keys in this game, Dan, has been how many times you've had to say tough shot. Yeah. Because you're, you're taking contested shot after contested shot. Getting an open one is so difficult. Black Shear off balance. No tip, no good. Harrell battling for it. Rozier comes down with it, misses the baseline jumper, and Anuaku is fouled by Lyles. And that's what Louisville needs. They need a second big guy in addition to Montrez Harrell to step forward and battle. And Shinano Anuaku has done just that, going after those rebounds with two hands. But you know, Terry Rozier, Chris Jones, when they do get an open shot, they've got to make it. I mean, that was a wide open shot along the baseline. Collie Stein tips it away and comes up with the ball. And Montrez Harrell staring down an official as if to say, how do you think I wound up over here? Well, he jumped in the way of Willie Cauley-Stein. I thought actually that Harrell could have picked up a foul yeah. there. But great Stein, hustle. It is great hustle yeah. and great athleticism on the part of both players. But Cauley-Stein had to be thinking back to his football days for that one. The way he Why ran that over. Floater by Jones. In and out. Johnson with a rebound. Jones got flattened trying to take the ball away from him. Holly Stein again. And the call goes against Louisville. Rozier called for the block. And Chris Jones checking his teeth. Trying to throw that ball on. Usually those passes are not contested. Holly Stein stuck with it. He got away with a little bit of a push, but I thought Harrell kind of jumped in his path afterwards. And Collie Stein, just a, a tremendous defender. You know, that is usually an easy pass on the inbounds. And now they're going to check that, that elbow. And it, it, it'd be hard pressed to call that now after they didn't call it the first time. But after a rebound, you know, what, what is Dakari Johnson supposed to do? Well, he never got hit. Well, yeah, and guys he are flopping all the time, but, yeah. but there's a foul. You know, like, if you don't call the first foul, it's awfully difficult to call the second. You have to expect there to be a, a second. Well, either he got hit with something else at some other time, or he is one of the great actors in college basketball right now. I mean, maybe we can get another look at it, but it didn't look like uh, Dakari Johnson's elbows were within six inches of Chris Jones. Well, we've got a huge flopping problem in college basketball in general, but because of this rule, you see it more often. And look at that. He Are you got, kidding not me? Not even close. That's embarrassing. That is embarrassing. Now, look, he's being fouled there. That's a foul. But you've got to be kidding me. The officials have to be given some authority in order to call a, a, either a foul or a technical foul on flops. Yeah. Going, you know, it, yeah. it, at some point, we're going to have to address this as a game. And look, Chris Jones isn't the only one that does that. They, you get rewarded for flopping in college basketball. But it's gotten to be an epidemic. Eulis. Nice touch. Well, what phase is that kid? I wonder if he even has a heartbeat. 
Freshman from Lima, Ohio, gives Kentucky its largest lead of the afternoon. Jones, and of all the shots he's taken, the toughest one will drop. Jones took the contact from Willie Cauley-Stein and still had the strength to complete that play. It looked like he was turning out and away from the basket. But just that little hesitation move, and the shot fakes have been very effective for Louisville in the first half. They need to continue to do that because Kentucky has not proven they will stay down on those fakes. Second foul on a Willie Cauley-Stein. Have to expect full court pressure after a make or a miss here, but neither team is a good free throw shooting team. Lyles tries the reverse. Johnson over on Uwaku, had it and lost it. Now a run out for Louisville. Rozier off balance, count it! And there was plenty of contact there that Rozier finished through. He got fouled and still finished that play. Crowd back into it here in Louisville. Lead down to four for Kentucky. They get it across. Eulis is open. Adding on who got a piece of that. And now Pauly Stein called for his third. This is something you'll see a lot from an experienced guard. Reach in with the arm, and the head snaps back, makes the contact look worse than it was. But was there enough on the arm bar there to call a foul? Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, that was a foul. Yeah. It was just, you know, that's called selling the call. Yeah. You know, I tend to think that's a lot different than flopping. Maybe we're talking about just degrees. But there was no question of the foul. Can Harry get going? Down to the rebound is Towns. So Towns has been tough and physical in this one. Remember, this is the first true road game of the season for Kentucky. So for the freshmen on the scene, Lyle Towns, Eulis, they haven't played in anything like this to this point in their collegiate careers. We asked John Calipari about that yesterday at practice. He said, no big deal. Well, he's trying to sell his team that in order to be a world-class team, you've got to embrace this kind of environment and have fun in it. Shannon Spake has more. No, Willie Conley Stein, he agreed, you know, that he, he knows that this game is not going to define his season, but he said for the fans, there are two big games in the season, this one and the national championship, and these guys know that. A lot of people thinking that this game, as Towns is left open, will miss the jumper. A lot of people feel, and probably rightly so, Jay, that you know, anybody can get beat. Nobody's saying Kentucky's going to go undefeated, but that when you look at the matchups they have remaining in the season on paper, this figured to be the toughest one. No question. Here's Rozier. Blackshear the pull-up. Two-point game. The SEC as a league, there are no other ranked teams other than Kentucky right now in the SEC. Well, look how far out that... Kentucky's had to start its offense. Andrew Harrison wants to drive. And he gets called for the offensive foul. So it's all Louisville in terms of momentum going into the first time out of the second half. They've gotten an eight-point deficit down to two, and they've got the ball back. Number one, number four, a couple of undefeateds going at it. Well, as Jay Phillips said in the first half, you got to be strong with the ball today. Because if you don't take good care of it, they, whoever they are on both sides, Jay, they're coming after it. Not just going after a steal to swipe it away, going to grab it. And you haven't seen many open opportunities like that for Willie Cauley-Stein. And thus far in the game, Dan, Kentucky has not shot a single free throw. And I believe it's because they've been settling. They've been settling for jump shots instead of going to the basket and creating a confrontation in front of the rim. A couple of minutes ago, Louisville was 6 for 33 from the floor. They made three of their last four. They get back within two. They have a held ball, and the arrow will give it to Kentucky before that miss by Jones. So by today's standards, by the standards of this game, Louisville's hot right now. But it's been a very low-scoring game. Kentucky's only shooting 36%. 
Well, another incredibly difficult shot by Chris Jones. I mean, if you charted the contested shots and the percentage, the percentages would be pitiful. Not just bad, but pitiful. Three-point shooting has not been much of a factor in this game at all. Kentucky's made two of six, Louisville one of seven. Rebounding favors the Wildcats. Turnovers been a, been a problem for Kentucky. Wide open was Aaron Harrison. Missed a deep three. Back comes Louisville. Blackshear steps into a three. Way too strong. Jones with the offensive rebound. Oh. And he might have been better off kicking that one back out. Andrew Harrison. Louisville ball. A little bit later on today, Boston College and Penn State will square off in the new era pinstripe bowl. That's at 4.30 Eastern time. And then Nebraska takes on number 24 USC in the National University Holiday Bowl as Capital One Bowl Mania continues on ESPN. Well, Dan, I don't know why that Andrew Harrison slowed down going to the basket there. I know he tried a little Euro step in traffic. But he got a pass ahead. He needed to put his head down and get to the basket as quickly as he could. It was like, it's like he took his time to get there. Rulis back in for Andrew Harris. Arrow being handled for the most part by Collie Stein today. Mango Mathian. Trying to back down Towns. And the help defender, Collie Stein, slaps it away. Towns with a full head of steam. That's how you take the ball to the basket. We're talking about a 6'11", 7-footer, Carl Anthony Towns. The freshman from New Jersey. Ball knocked away, and that's just too much time for Mango Mathiang to be dribbling anywhere near traffic. And that's the confrontation that you have to create at the rim in order to draw a foul. And how about his eyes up? His eyes were on the rim the whole time, either through the contact to complete the play. That was big time. And the freshman gives Kentucky a five-point lead. Louisville has led a couple of times very briefly in this game. Kentucky's led by as many as eight. Louisville's done everything they've needed to do on the defensive end. Their defense has been magnificent, but their offense has been lacking, and they've taken way too many contested shots. Rozier. Wow. And he thought he missed it. He was following it with a vengeance, and it went in. Well, that was another contested one. You talk about having a hand in your face. He's got 10 to lead the Cardinals. Booker with a strong drive. So now Kentucky breaking the pressure to score. And they'd have to work incredibly hard to get that kind of shot in, in the half court. Rozier misses the jumper, gets it back. And a timeout taken by Rick Pitino. There is fire in his eyes right now as he calls his players over. The lead is five for the Wildcats. Kentucky's had a hard time scoring in the half court. The antidote for that is to play ahead of the defense. And Devin Booker gets a two-on-one and completes it. Welcome back to Louisville. Dan Schulman, Jay Bill, Shannon Spink. Glad you're along with us. Happy holidays. Number one and number four tangling here. Arch rivals, no love lost. And... Montrez Harrell, one of the great players in college basketball this season, has had by his standards a very quiet afternoon. Do we give Willie Cauley-Stein a lot of the credit for that? You give Willie Cauley-Stein credit in the Kentucky defense. I mean, what Kentucky has done to Louisville on its defensive end. I mean, Montrez Harrell, Wayne Blackshear, and Chris Jones have combined for 5 of 24. Really the only offense that Louisville's had has been Terry Rozier, who's got 10 points and 7 rebounds. But here's, here's an example of how difficult it's been for, for Louisville. Louisville's got one assist in this ballgame, one. Now, Kentucky only allows opponents seven assists per game. They, they, their offense has to go rogue. you got to go one-on-one -on -one in order to beat them. That's what Blackshear is trying to do. Won't fall. Harold with the offensive rebound. The kick out to Jones for three. And Lyles down with the rebound. Lost it. And it's out of bounds to Louisville. Well, Kentucky didn't come away with that, but they got, in a sense, lucky because after that rebound by Harrell, you're not going to get a better three-point shot than a step-in three after an offensive rebound. And Louisville has to make those shots. They've had open ones. they got to make them. Louisville's one for ten from three-point range, and now we got a foul call. 
Going against the Cardinals, it's on Mathieu. Just a little fade screen on the out of bounds. Either going to be a fade and a duck in. But that, there wasn't much, in, in this kind of game with the physicality. I mean, that was that was like getting hit with a feather duster. There was basically nothing there. Eulis at the point for Kentucky. with Mathiang on him, drives by him. Towns working hard, has it swatted away, but there is a foul call, and Towns will be rewarded with a trip to the free throw line. Well, that drive by Aaron Harrison was outstanding. He had Mathiang on him, gave a little look to the basket, and then went right around him. And Carl Anthony Towns has been phenomenal on the glass. You see this terrific drive. And Towns was essentially blocking out Montrez Harrell to keep him from blocking that shot and still was able to go after that rebound with both hands. Number two on Harrell, Matthew Yang sits down on a walkie back into the game for Louisville. Kentucky 32 and 15 all time against Louisville. They've won six of the last seven. One coincides with John Calipari's tenure as head coach of the Wildcats. Booker out. So it's Euless and both of the Harrison twins in there for Kentucky right now, along with Towns and Lyles. You've got three freshmen and two sophomores in the game right now for the Wildcats. Even though both teams are great shot blocking teams, you still have to attack the basket. You got to take this to the rim. If they send it back, so be it. Rozier. And a held ball will go to Louisville as Towns and Anuaku get tangled up. And everybody's best interest to stay calm. Well, there's no calm. He just got up quickly. Now getting up quickly is seen as a problem. But Carl Anthony Towns, all he did was get up quickly. He didn't step to anyone. Well, he really goes after with both hands. And both, you know, both players just fighting for the ball. It's not that big of a deal. They went down. Well, Anuaku looked like inadvertently he got hit. I don't know if it was an elbow or just maybe the, the back of the arm from Towns. Well, if you don't get hit with an elbow in this game, you're, you're, not, putting your, you're not putting your body in there. Your elbow's flying everywhere. Towns out, Johnson in. And the foul's going to go against Lyles. He was trying to do what Collie Stein did a little bit earlier. Tip the inbounds, pass ahead, and go get it. Second on Trey Lyles. Well, Kentucky has scouted Louisville very effectively. And they're trying to take away the initial pass off this inbounds. Anytime you play against these two teams, you got, you got to take away the bucket first and watch lob. They get it in. Rozier. Down to the rebound, Johnson. Louisville just cannot heat up from the perimeter. Andrew Harrison off to Tyler Eulis with a bounce pass inside. Baseline jumper, Lyles, no good. Rozier down with yet another rebound, one of the best rebounding guards in America. Really one of the first times that Trey Lyles has missed an open opportunity in this game. He's been terrific. Jones probing. Just too much size. Jones 5'10", got a 6'6 guard, and Aaron Harrison on it. Harrell into the double team, finishes strong. Back to a four-point game. Well, Montrez Harrell has got so much ability. This is the type of possession when you're on the road that you can answer. Quiet the crowd. See if Kentucky's got the chops to do it. Jakari Johnson. And a travel is called. Basketball. 11.23 to go here in this heated rivalry between Kentucky and Louisville. A couple of undefeated teams and a lot on the line here at the KFC M Center. For Monday, January 5th, it's Big Monday presented by Verizon, Notre Dame, and North Carolina. And a great-looking ACC matchup, a part of Journey to the Journey. Presented by Sonic. If you have watched the Irish at all this year, and I know you have, Jake, you have seen a team that executes about as well offensively as any team in the country. One of the best passing teams in the country, Notre Dame. And 
you know, I've said this before about the Irish. They have a culture of passing. They share the ball as well as anybody in the country. And Jaron Grant has had an outstanding year on both ends of the floor. He's a, he's a very good defender, but one of the best scorers and passers you're going to find in the country. Four-point lead for Kentucky. 11.23 to go here in the second half. Kentucky's played nine. The, you know, the narrative is always you can't wear down the Wildcats. The Wildcats will wear down the opposition. Rick Pitino has played really seven players. Quentin Snyder played for one minute, but really Louisville has used seven players in this game. And you see if they have the legs and the stamina to keep doing everything they can down the stretch. They just popped it up. Well, Kentucky going with three guards. Got Bulis and both the Harrisons. And Andrew Harrison has struggled when he's been at the point. He's turned it over five times in this one. So Eulis gives him another ball handler against the pressure. But Kentucky's got to continue to get the ball to the rim. Andrew Harrison, a kick to Eulis for the corner three. That's just putting pressure on the rim. That drive got everything to collapse, and you can kick it out to an open shooter. That baseline drive, baseline drift into the corner. Eulis has played very well today. Left the game for a few minutes in the first half after suffering a cut above his right eye. As it bandaged up back in there and playing well in the second half. I don't think he's only 18. Well, that's good. That basket's good. Yeah, Carl Hess is signaling that the basket counts, and I think there's also a foul. Mike Roberts has called a foul. Carl Hess called the goaltend. So Montrez Harrell has a chance for a three-point play. That was just a dumb play by Carl Anthony Towns. He's right under the basket. He leave that thing alone. That was right under the basket. That's just textbook goaltending. And that is the fourth foul on Towns. Or was on Cauley Stein? I'm sorry, Cauley Stein called for the foul. His fourth. And that is a loss, to say the least, for Kentucky. We'll see how long John Calipari is going to leave him out. Not sure if Tyler Eulis is bleeding again, but Carl Hess has taken him over. He must be bleeding out of that same cut he had in the first half. So he'll take him over to the cut man. <laughs> you need a cut man in this game. So foul trouble and cut trouble right now for Kentucky. And Montrez Harrell just saw the ball go through the basket. And it's been a while for him. He's had to work very, very hard today. And the Louisville All-American, you got to believe if they're going to win this game, Jay, he's going to have to have a really good 10 minutes down the stretch. No question. And Montrez Harrell is a real key for this Louisville team. But also, guys like Wayne Blackshear, Terry Rozier has had an excellent game especially on a relative basis. But Chris Jones still has to make plays down the stretch. They've got guys that can make plays. They just have to do it. And Harrell has improved his free throw shooting. He was under 50% last year. He's much better, but still not a good free throw shooter. Aaron and Rozier at the top of that zone right now for Louisville. Kentucky has to keep driving it, has to keep putting pressure on the lane. Aaron Harrison. And a foul on Blackshear. Next Saturday, got a doubleheader for you here on ESPN2. Begins with the Big Ten as Illinois takes on number 21, Ohio State. And then number five, Virginia and Miami. We have the second game of the doubleheader on the home floor of College Hoops. Tell you what, Virginia's the real thing. They are not only disciplined and strong defensively, but they can, they are really athletic. They are the only team in the country allowing fewer points per game than Kentucky. Louisville comes up with a steal, and then they call a timeout to maintain possession. Well, just getting the ball in bounds has been an issue in this game. Everything's challenged, and if you're weak in any way, you know, Wayne Blackshear did a nice job of just using both hands and knocking that ball away. Now, Kentucky, they've been annihilating just about everybody. Anybody who saw the UCLA game last week, 41-7 to at halftime, 83-44 was the final. You call them a decent and average offensive team, but an extraordinary defensive team. Well, yeah, at maybe average in the half court. Right. I mean, offensively, they're among the top five in the country from an efficiency standpoint, but in large measure, that's because of their defense, right. that they're out in the open court and they're able to get a lot off offensive uh, rebound opportunities. But I, I don't think the issue when you play Kentucky is, geez, how do you stop the Wildcats offense? It's how do you score? Right. And we've seen that in this game.
that Louisville's announced it's a great defensive team. I mean, they've, they've held Kentucky to, to 35 points, and they're down five. <laughs> Ten of the 12 teams that Kentucky has played this year have had their lowest scoring output of the season in their game against Kentucky. And the other two probably just can't score, period. <laughs> Blackshear, he can score. Not this time, though, and down with another rebound is Towns. A little reach in at the end seemed like it got Wayne Blackshear to adjust that shot. He's got to start making shots. Got a plot in, and Kentucky didn't get anything easy out of that transition opportunity. Louisville's down by five. Less than nine minutes to go here in the second half. Got to watch where Devin Booker is. He's the, the best shooter on the floor. Euless the drive. Euless the kick. Andrew Harrison turns it over and commits the foul. And that's turnover number six for Andrew Harrison. This has not been a good day. And 16 for the team. And when you do it, when you're having a tough day, and you do this right in front of your coach, right in front of your own bench, he knew where he was headed as soon as that play was finished. The play was shot fake, draw a defender, and kick it to Devin Booker. Now they were smart to guard him on the drive by Tyler Eulis. But that's just a giveaway. Bonus both ways with 8.48 to go. A lot of times when you're a, a shooter or a scorer like Wayne Blackshear and you've been struggling, you know, getting fouled allows you to see the ball go through the basket a couple of times. and you can Get a little bit of confidence from that, and it can really lift you up. Three-point game. Again, one of the things for Kentucky, they've got a ton of talent, but in a game like this where they absolutely have to have a bucket, who do they give it to? You know, is there somebody that they can say, okay, we're going to give it to Julius Randle or so, whoever it is, and get a basket? Towns is fouled. They've had eight different players lead them in scoring this year, to your point. That's good news, but it also could be construed as bad news in a situation where they need a basket. Yeah, and it's just situational. Yeah. You know, you're going to be in close games, and when you're in a one-possession game like you are now, I mean, you've got players who can create opportunities, and Tyler Eulis just created one for Carl Anthony Towns. But Towns even could have completed that play. He got fouled, but he sort of double-clutched with it instead of going up. Saying, hey, look, it's easy to say. You're going up against a shot blocker. It gets in your head to avoid the, the block shot, but you really have to go into that contact if you want to get fouled and complete it. Back to a five-point lead. Eight points on the afternoon for Towns. And Rozier has had an awfully difficult time of finding shot opportunities in the second half. And he's a guy that can... Really get going in a hurry. Booker knocks it out of bounds, and Jones will return now for Louisville. Heading to the bench is Shaquan Aaron. Yeah, offensively for each team, it's been like being in a dentist's office. <laughs> There's no flow to it because everything's contested. Kind of what you expected, though, right? Well, you expect it to be hard fought. You know, you've had some shot opportunities where a guy should be able to make these shots. Rozier. Harrell had it, had it knocked away. Lyles ahead to Booker. Well, how about the presence of mind by Trey Lyles to throw that ahead? Montrez Harrell looked like he had a, an offensive rebound bucket. Ball gets knocked away, and all of a sudden it's a layup for Kentucky. That'll take the air out of the building. Up to seven. Louisville had it down to three a couple of minutes ago. And there's a push on Euless, which will take us to a timeout. Louisville will be at the line when we come back, where the Wildcats have extended the lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Proud sponsor of the 2015 John R. Wooden Men's Player of the Year Award. And Porsche, there is no substitute. Afternoon as well. They'll tip it about 10 past four. UAB in North Carolina, and then Gonzaga and BYU coming your way at six Eastern today. Also here on ESPN two. 
Well, both teams up in the mid to high 70s, and right now both teams are in the 30s with 7.41 to go here in the second half. Yeah, if you had the under in this one, you're looking good. <laughs> Wait, so it's an amazing stat in this game that you know, Kentucky's defense is so good. They have only allowed one assist for Louisville in this game. Louisville's got 12 field goals, just one assist. You don't often talk about the number of assists a team allows, but you're talking about how how hard they make it to move the ball, and everybody's having to go one on one to generate offense for Louisville. Well, Kentucky's length, and it's not just their length up front. A lot of times you talk about length and wingspan, all that stuff. You're talking about bigger players, but Kentucky's guards, with the exception of Tyler Ulis, are, are six six. Both Harrisons and Booker. Aaron Harrison, the kick to Ulis. You know, he might have been, to this point, the best player on the floor in the game, certainly maybe for Kentucky. He's had a heck of an afternoon. He has had a really good game, and he's been a, a big lift to be able to put in when Andrew Harrison has struggled yep. mightily, especially turning the ball over. Great play by Aaron Harrison there. And he's fouled by Blackshear. I like your point about, about Ulis. I'd put Trey Lyles and... Carl Anthony Towns right up with him. You know, Tyler Ulis has his feet set. That was a great drive by Aaron Harrison. You know, just because you're playing against a, an outstanding defensive team doesn't mean you shouldn't continue to put pressure on the rim. And I think Ulis is now the first Wildcat to get into double figures in this one. The foul was on Blackshear, his fourth. Holly Stein is on the bench with four for Kentucky. Let's check in with Shannon. Well, Dan, how many times have we heard over the last couple of days Coach Calipari say we need a game like this to see how hard we can fight back? Well, he said that to his guys in the first half. He looked right at him and said, we need this. They're fighting harder. They came out. They have obviously some of these guys have responded. I mean, Lewis has a cut over his eye, but he has challenged his guys over on the bench. All right, Shannon, thank you. Less than seven minutes to go. Rozier can't finish. Lyles with a rebound. And Ulis into the front court now for the Wildcats. This is the largest lead of the afternoon for Kentucky. Well, Kentucky is younger, especially on the floor right now with their big guys. Their big guys have just been stronger. Carl Anthony Towns and Trey Lyles have been physical. They've gone after the ball with both hands. And they've gotten more rebounds and more loose balls than Louisville. And Harrell's not been able to have his typical afternoon. And Ulis keeps knocking down shots. And Rick Pitino is going to burn another timeout. Uh, Tyler Ulis was the lowest rated recruit of this Kentucky recruiting class. He was 25th in the country, the 25th <laughs> best player in the country. And he has been one of the best players, if not the best player, on the court in the second half. And to be able to bring in Tyler Ulis, who comes off that high ball screen, gets Mango Mathiang on him, and just stops on a dime and pulls up. And to be able to bring a guy like Ulis in off the bench when your starting point guard who has played in the national championship game has turned it over at least six times. There may be more than that for Andrew Harrison. This has not been his finest hour as a player. He's a really good player. But Tyler Ulis has been terrific. And how, how many teams, Dan, have the luxury of bringing in a point guard of that caliber off the bench? Yep. And we have seen John Calipari get away, both the injury to Poitras and the closeness of the game, get away from the platoon system. And, and he's riding the hot hand, and he needs Ulis right now. And Ulis has delivered. It's Poitras, who is uh, due to have knee surgery at some point in the next couple of weeks after tearing his ACL. Now Kentucky's going to have to try to handle some back screen action. Blackshear, and he's fouled by Lyles. Every time that Louisville has shot fake. Kentucky has been on. So they are leaving the floor every time a, a Louisville ball handler raises his eyebrows. And that's something that they're going to have to clean up. Two shots for Blackshear. He had 31 points Tuesday versus Cal State Northridge. That was a career high. He had 23 points in the first half. He had the first 13 points of the game for the Cardinals. He's averaging almost 14 points per game as a senior from Chicago. But he has not been a consistent threat over the course of his career for the Cardinals. Knocks him down, and it's a nine-point game. More pressure. 
What a great fake. Terrific fake and then turning sideline side by Devin Booker to get away from that double team. And a challenge over Mathieu. That was big time to get the ball inside. You got one on one coverage. Matthew on Towns. So Towns just took his time and was very poised in the low post and making that move. Pointed at his, at his bicep as he ran down, back down the court. Is it to say, I'm a little stronger than he is? And he was on that play. There's a bump by Booker that will send Rozier to the line. Just a, a really nice move into the middle. And then turn in baseline side for essentially a little drop step jump hook. See, when your biceps are really big, you don't have to point at them. <laughs> People can just see them. He's had a good game, too. Really good. The, the freshmen have played well. I mean, to come into this environment and to perform at a high level really says a lot about you as a player. And Carl Anthony Towns, Trey Lyles, Devin Booker, but but especially Lyles and Towns have played inside against some quality big guys and quality athletes. And Louisville's really talented. And they've handled themselves very well. But there's a long way to go in this game. And Andrew Harrison back in. Ulysses is back on the bench getting that cut worked on again. Blackshear providing the pressure on Harrison. Dribbles by so they're not even going after the, to trap him. They want him to handle the ball right now because they've gotten some good things that he's been handling. Aaron Harrison misses the three. And it's Kentucky ball. Went out off of Anawaku. He's talking to himself saying, grab the ball. Well, Andrew Harrison has played slow in this game. Even when he's gotten ball screens, he's coming off him slow. When he's gone to the basket, he's gone slow. He's got to pick up the pace in this thing. You know, Kentucky, with all the, the talent that they've got in depth, they need to play fast. And here's the guy that needs to key it. He needs to attack off this ball screen. Got the switch, has Harrell on him. A step back three for Andrew Harrison to extend the lead to a dozen. Uh, that's the kind of answer after you've had a really difficult game that Kentucky needed to see from Andrew Harrison. He has not played well, but that doesn't mean he can't play well down the stretch. And they have pulled away to a certain extent from Louisville, and they have quieted the sellout crowd of better than 22,000 to a certain extent. Another really difficult challenge shot. And Rick Pitino will use his last timeout. I mean, down 12, that's almost a third of the points for this Louisville team. They have not been able to score against this Kentucky defense. It has been an absolute clinic defensively for Kentucky. And the smallest guy in the game has maybe had the biggest impact on this game. Well, Tyler Uless plays at both ends of the floor. He took one right in the, uh, right in the chops. He's able to get the ball into the teeth of the defense. Little baseline drive, baseline drift. He kept his dribble and was passing it as he was leaving the, the court to go out of bounds. And then Andrew Harrison with the terrific drive into traffic, drawing the defense, everybody inside that three-point line. And then Tyler Ulis, who's an excellent shooter, shooting over 50% from three. And Ulis has led the way with 12 points, Towns with 10. But it's been the defense that, that's really been the story for Kentucky. Their top four scores, freshman, 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 freshman. And they are playing in their first true road game as collegiate basketball players, and they've all played well here today. It's impossible to avoid. A lot of the talk around college basketball this year is, can this Kentucky team go undefeated? Wichita State was undefeated going into the tournament last year. The last team to go right through and win a national championship undefeated, Indiana, 1976. Can Kentucky do it? Can they? Yes. I still think it's a little bit improbable, but getting through this game, if they're able to, and you take a look at this 1976 Indiana team, that's Quinn Buckner with the ball going in against Michigan in the 76 title game. Kent Benson, number 54. Yeah, you have Bobby Wilkerson on that team, Tom Abernathy, just a, an amazing basketball team coached by Bob Knight. Actually, his 75 team lost only one game, that game to Kentucky in the NCAA tournament after 
Scott May had broken his arm. You're talking about a team that went undefeated for two straight years in the Big Ten. And that, that was a different era in college basketball. In, in the one-and-done era, uh, this Kentucky team is the most formidable basketball team I've seen. Yeah, holding Louisville to 38 points through just about 36 minutes of play. Well, that's incredible. Louisville with the ball down 12. Rozier. Anuaku runs it down. And then a foul is called on Aaron Harrison. And that's one thing that Kentucky cannot do down the stretch, and that's foul to put Louisville at the free throw line where they get to score with no defense. They've had a hard time scoring with defense. They certainly can't give them opportunity to score without it. I just can't get over the one assist. <laughs> They, they, Kentucky is holding teams to only seven assists per game. But to only have one assist in a basketball game is stunning. And shooting 23% from the field. Now, Louisville's not known as a great shooting team, but 23%. UCLA in the first half, that incredible first half that Kentucky had against them last week. UCLA went three for 37 in the first half. I mean, how do you, that, that ball started rolling downhill for them in a hurry. Yeah. So it, it kept getting worse. But... What do you have to do to get 50 on this team? They have to spot you 20. Andrew Harrison staying in the game right now. Drives off the back of the iron, gets it back. Smart for Kentucky to use some clock. That just reduces the amount of time that Louisville has to try to make a comeback. Uh, this kind of game, this has been a grinder. So I think it's smart for John Calipari to take some air out of it. And just make sure you're attacking the last 10, 12 seconds of the top line. Aaron Harrison off to Cauley Stein. Dumps it inside for Towns. Kicks it out. Aaron Harrison. And they've got another offensive rebound. You're going to have to get out of pressure here. They can't sit back. That was the shot. I don't know why Andrew Harrison just did that. Jones trying to draw the foul. Good note calls. He clearly leaned into the defender. Rozier now with a drive. That's a foul. How did... Jones for three. I think John Calipari just yelled at the wrong Harrison coming off the floor. <laughs> he, he, got in, he got into Aaron Harrison yeah. about taking that shot. He's like, hey, don't look at me. That was my brother. That might have been the best part of the game. <laughs> well, one of you's coming out as soon as I figure it out. Give me a replay. <laughs> Down to eight with 2.16 to go. Coming up soon, Boston College and Penn State square off of the new era pinstripe bowl. And then tonight at 8 Eastern, Nebraska and USC for the National University Holiday Bowl as Capital One Bowl Mania continues on ESPN. 22,812, the vast majority of them, of course, Louisville fans, but you got to give Kentucky credit for uh, they've, they've played well. Louisville hasn't shot the ball well, but I think Jack Calipari's got to be pretty happy with what he's seen out of his team today. Well, both teams have played really hard. Yeah. I think you can question when you go on the road. I'm sure that John Calipari, watching the film with his team, is going to question some of the decisions that they've made. You know, turn the ball over at a high rate, but you're playing against a great defensive team in Louisville. I mean, Louisville's, they're good enough to win the whole thing. Now, they don't shoot well, nor does Kentucky shoot it particularly well, but their defense is going to keep them in every game they play, and they're both teams are going to get better offensively as the season goes along. I think Kentucky's got a much higher ceiling to be a better offensive team because of some of the weapons they've got. Well, Aaron Harrison has not shot the ball well this season. And he's much, a much better shooter than he's shown. Euless can make shots and Booker can make shots. And so can Trey Lass. Andrew Harrison back to the bench. Euless back into the game. This is what John Calipari wanted to do the last possession after they got that third offensive rebound, and Andrew Harrison just pitched it up for no reason. Euless with a shot clock running down. Towns saves it. 
and then throws it away. Pass was deflected. Bucket here would be huge for Louisville. He hit him. Three free throws coming for Wayne Blackshear. Bob Knight always says dumb loses more games than smart wins. That was dumb. Back to the studio. Here's Carl Ravitch. I did it. 32 to go here with the KFC Yum Center in Louisville. The Cardinals are down by eight to Kentucky and three free throws coming for Wayne Blackshear. This is Towns running down the rebound, but then throwing it away. And this play winds up with a foul. Not a good foul committed by Booker. Just running over Blackshear. Well, it's just two dumb plays in a row by Kentucky. Towns had a timeout. He could have called the timeout. You know, you're trapped in the corner. You don't want to throw across court. You're giving Louisville a chance to take it the other way. And that one mistake compounded by another freshman, Devin Booker, and fouling a three-point shooter. So all of a sudden, you know, you, you have the ball in your possession with, what, a minute 40? And you throw the ball away. And now that now Louisville's shooting free throws with a chance to you know, get the lead down, and then you can throw a press on. And there's just way too much time to be casual and cavalier with the ball. Wow. Blackshear comes into this game as a 74% free throw shooter, and he has missed the first two. Now it's going to be up to Louisville to get a turnover and for Kentucky to be strong with the ball and at least get fouled and then step the line and hit big free throws. Aaron Harrison uses a timeout. You can't catch it in that corner. That's called the coffin corner. That's what Rick Patino calls it. That's where he wants you to catch it. Now with the timeout, let's send it back to the studio again. Check in with Carl. Hi, Dan. Appreciate it. Just want to let everybody know that North Carolina out to a 5-0 lead with the ball against UAB on their home floor. Our next game here on ESPN2, currently on ESPN News and all sorts of college football bowl games over on ESPN. 7-0. All right, Carl, thank you. A minute 29 to go here in Kentucky with the ball and a 7-point lead. Rick Pitino's out of timeouts. And it's two free throws the rest of the way for Kentucky if Louisville starts fouling. Really, right now, it's up to Kentucky to do a, a better job of getting open, getting the ball inbound. Right now, they cannot move. So that's going to be a difficult area from which to inbound the ball. And they're going to have to use another timeout. So they've got one left. Well, for most of the season, John Calipari has been saying things like, quote, we're playing against ourselves. But they're getting pushed here. They're in their first true road game in a hostile environment, playing a very good team. And uh, some good things to come out of this game, you would figure, for a, still a very young Kentucky team, staying undefeated, staying number one, that's one thing. But getting better in the process is all uh, part of it for Kentucky as well. Well, it's a team that's still maturing. They're young in spots, and they've got incredible talent. Their talent level, their size, their defensive ability. You know, this is the best defensive team in the country, and Louisville's not far behind. The question is, how good is Kentucky's offense going to be as we get toward the end of the season? Because there are other teams out there. Like, Kentucky's not unbeatable. I think they're the best team. But Wisconsin, Duke, you've got a number of teams, Virginia, that can beat Kentucky. It's just going to take an extraordinary effort. And the question is, can you score enough points to beat them? If you would think that, hey, you hold Kentucky to 50, you're going to have a great shot to win. If you hold them to 50, and you're down seven. <laughs> Kentucky gets it over. Rick Pitino going to play him straight up for one more possession before he starts fouling. Eulis kicks it to Aaron Harrison. Got the feel of a dagger right there. Well, Louisville's seen that before. A lot of people saw that from Aaron Harrison last uh, March and April, didn't they? Jones with a tough finish. Down to eight. So only 49 seconds remaining. They lost the point in the exchange. And now they'll send Euless to the line. Well, Aaron Harrison has not shot the ball as well as he is capable, and Tyler Euless finds him cross court. Boy, when he needs to hit a shot, Aaron Harrison has ice water in his veins. 
He knocked down a three with 39 seconds left in the Sweet 16 game against Louisville last year, and that gave Kentucky a lead they would not relinquish as they went on to win 74 to 69. Hit big shots against Michigan in the Elite Eight. Hit a huge shot against Wisconsin in the Final Four. And that was a big one in this one. Eulis misses the front end of the one and one, but it's out of bounds to Kentucky. And you can really see the frustration on the part of the Cardinals. This has been a very frustrating afternoon to go against this Kentucky defense, and they have not seen the ball go through the net very much at all since warm-ups. The one point was six for 33 in this game. That's an 18% field goal percentage. They're at 25 right now, 14 for 56. You can be the assist leader for Louisville with one. Yeah, I'd love to go back and see it. It's a, it's a, remar <laughs> it's a remarkable stat. I don't think yeah. I've ever I've ever seen a game. I agree. It, it, certainly with high-level teams where one of the teams had only one assist. It's remarkable. And Kentucky just continues to get the best shot of opponents. And they've answered, the, they've answered the bell every time. And now the Louisville fans are trying to drown out the Kentucky fans who are chanting, Go Big Blue, here in Louisville. How painful is that for a Cardinal fan? Louisville fans are starting to file out. Kentucky fans aren't going anywhere. It has been a methodical defensive display. Down to seven. Booker is fouled by Jones. So Kentucky, assuming they don't have a complete collapse here, will move to 13-0 and remain undefeated. Their next game is not till January the 6th at home against Ole Miss. They open up SEC play. As you have said, anybody can get beat. They've got a stretch in February. They go to Florida, then they go to LSU on a Saturday, Tuesday. There are some good teams in the SEC, but after Kentucky, this is not a vintage SEC. It is not. And you know, Alabama can score. I think when you look at the app, where they have to go play, uh, that's the issue. They don't have to go to Arkansas, though Arkansas is, is a, a very good team. But we're not talking about the kind of teams that we've seen in the SEC. This is not a vintage Florida team. That Billy Donovan's got, and Kentucky is better than they have been, especially on the defensive end. Lee with a rejection on Jones. Back over to Kentucky one more time. Euless back in. Well, Jennifer Lawrence stuck it out, Jay. True fan. And aren't we all glad about that? <laughs> Although she's backing Judd. up. Ashley Judd wouldn't leave, why should she? Bobby Stein is fouled by Jones. So much hype heading into this game. And Kentucky with a lot of time to prepare for it. They'll get a few days away over the holidays, coming off their win over UCLA a week ago. Uh, this game's frustrating to lose. It's, uh, it's euphoric when you win. But after it's over, you, know, you can enjoy it. And you can lick your wounds when you lose, but you got to move on. But both these teams are Final Four caliber teams. And if you can get to a Final Four, you can win it. And I, I think Louisville's really good. They just ran into a team that defensively, I've not seen the likes of this in the one-and-done era. This is the best defensive team that I've seen. Is it the best team that you've seen in the one-and-done era? I, I, it's the most powerful. I, I think they're off it. I think you them. I think the offensive, that was just a dumb play. I think the offense is is the, the question. Is Kentucky going to improve as an offensive team? Because this is not the best offense you've seen in the one that does. Not, no. not close to that. No. It's not the best offense you see around the country right now. I think Wisconsin's a better offensive team. Duke is a better offensive team. But you combine everything with the the, the talent level, the, the defense, their offensive rebounding. Well, the numbers are legitimately 9 deep, even, even with the loss of Poitras. They're almost immune to fatigue, and they're almost immune to foul trip. Exactly. And the only the only problem you have with fouls is you don't want to give away fouls, so you're putting the other team at the free throw line. But they really don't foul that much. 
you know, they give their shot blockers a chance to do their job, which is to block and change shots and protect the rim. And really, the, the challenge for John Calipari has been to prepare his team mentally. And every, you know, every day in practice, it's a battle. You know, one of the things that I think it would be interesting in, in having a team like Kentucky and Louisville is every time you drive to the basket, you're going up against those shot blockers. I mean, does that make it easier for you when you get into games, or, or do, you, do you think twice when you take it to the rim? <laughs> because you've been beaten up every day. The final seconds will tick away as number one Kentucky remains undefeated, a 58-50 to 50 win over Louisville. Here for the KFC M Center. Kentucky's now 13-0. Louisville drops to 11-1. For Jay Bill is Shannon Spank and our ESPN crew. I'm Dan Schulman saying happy holidays. And thanks for watching. UAB North Carolina is coming up. Let's send it to Mark Jones and Shane Battier.